Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Michael McCurry. I'm president of the Irish Astronomical Society, one of the oldest societies in, in, uh, in Ireland. We founded in 1937, and uh, I think a gentleman of our speakers must be a regional member of that society. I was going to talk this short because we have the ambassador here from Poland, and she lives in a little bit of Italy as well. So I'm going to put this short. Basically, um, can you just go ahead and start if you can? Yeah. Okay. So that's it. Um, first, this is the first time I've ever tried this. You can see that we yeah. find it all these good problems that we have. But as I can see, we're set up to promote the interest in all things in, in astronomy. But we do public talk, we do a, a, a part of our outreach program. We do side up events, we do uh, photographic and uh, astrophotography exhibitions, uh, talks to schools, and uh, some libraries as well. And we've just gone through a uh, Astronomy week, where we had a very good time at, at all our events. Thank God for that. And we're one of 15 astronomy clubs operating under the Irish Federation of uh, uh, Astronomical Societies. And we have one of the members of the Irish Are you president of the Irish Astronomical Society? Well, I'm the secretary. The secretary. So we have the secretary of the IAS uh, staff down there beside us. And as they're just trying to work with group, just a uh, uh, support for the group. And I thank you all for coming tonight. I, I'd like to introduce now the our Excellency Anna So Thank you, thank you very much. Good evening, ladies. Uh, it's such a good, great pleasure to be here uh, tonight, and uh, on this special occasion, the inaugural inaugural uh, meeting of the. Um, uh, Two societies from Poland and Ireland, friends of astronomy. And uh, it's a special occasion also because 2023 marks a 550th anniversary of the birth of Nikolai Copernic, uh, known uh, in Ireland and in other countries as uh, Nicholas uh, Copernicus. Um, I'm really uh, pleased that uh, tonight we'll hear uh, very interesting presentations. Uh, by Sebastian, who will talk about uh, total solar eclipse, by John, uh, who will deliver a lecture entitled uh, Astronomy in Ireland uh, Through the Ages. And I also know that um, Robert will uh, present a special project uh, called uh, Copernicus 23. 550. So I really wish you a really lovely. Uh, uh, evening and enjoy the lectures and thank you very much for your uh, uh, attention. Thank you. Professor has to go off. We're going to kick off with the, with the Polish uh, astronomy uh, doing their, their talks for us. I'm going to ask Robert to introduce um, and himself, so as it goes up, my Polish is not very good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure after Robert, he can, we can just go through the, the other uh, talk that speakers as well. Is that okay, Robert? Yes, that's okay. It's going to be my pleasure. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah perfect. Okay. Okay. Excellent. So, welcome everyone. I'm really proud and we're so happy that we have this kind of meeting. Uh, I'm sending warm wishes from Royal Castle in Warsaw. Tonight we have a special, special event because at the back you can see some reflets about uh, the, uh, the exhibition about the Copernicus. And this is something really symbolic that we have this meeting tonight, that we have a connection between our Polish and uh, Irish societies, so that we have ambassador, her eminence, uh, welcome. And that's, um, there's a lot of things is gonna, is gonna be over here. Um, there is uh, Mr. Przemek Ruch from Polish Space Agency. Uh, there is Mr. Krzysztof Chart, he's uh, Vice President of the Polish Astronomy Association and International Astronomical Union. Oh, I think the, the, the Mr. Krzysztof, he said a lot of about himself. It's of course Sebastian uh, Sobersk, a very important person for Polish uh, Astronomical Association, but also for us, for space enthusiasts. And today we can say this is kind of hub, kind of very nice, uh, 
in a space that we can share our experience, that we can make start to cooperate about the Copernicus project and a lot, a lot of more. But at the moment, I would like to give uh, uh, the, 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 the floor um, for Mr. Przemysław Fuch from uh, Polish Space Agency and of course from PTMA also. Przemek, uh, yeah. can you just yeah. say a couple of words about you, about Polish Space Agency? Okay. okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, good to be uh, here together with you. Uh, so, uh, first of all, um, please forgive me if I cut my speech short because of today's dental dental procedure. Simply, I can uh, I can feel half of my face because of my, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Uh, uh, so, my name is Przemek. Uh, Longer version is Przemysław, just but you can call me just PR. It's much uh, much simpler for you, probably. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a representative of the Polish Space Agency, Polsa, uh, where I work as a specialist uh, in the information promotion department. And one of the important areas of the agency's uh, activity uh, is space education and the popularization of knowledge about astronomy, astrophysics, um, and above all, astronautics and satellite technologies. Uh, we carry out these uh, activities, uh, activities independently, but, uh, but also in cooperation uh, with non-governmental organizations uh, that are focused on similar topics. Uh, both the Polish Society of Astronomy Enthusiasts, PTMA, as a nationwide um, organization and its Warsaw branch are, are natural partners uh, in the various types of projects. Uh, for example, uh, soon in one of uh, ministries uh, in uh, Warsaw, we jointly organized Children's Day uh, and uh, as a part of it, a white educational program combined with observation of suspects. Uh, there will be definitely more such corporations, considering that it is the year of uh, where we celebrate the uh, 550th anniversary of the of Nikolai Copernicus. But uh, POSA is also interested uh, in associating companies from the space sector um, as a part of international cooperation too. So uh, if any company from the space sector in Ireland I would like to establish contact, uh, business contact uh, with partners from Poland. Uh, we encourage uh, you to contact us. Uh, we know that a large Polish diaspora of immigrants found a new home in Ireland, uh, who perfectly integrated with local communities. They, they work hard, they pay taxes, <laughs> study and raise their children. Uh, we hope that under the condition of uh, European cooperation, uh, we will be able to uh, actively promote astronomy and astronautics, uh, inviting uh, Poles living in Ireland to join local organization of astro astronomy enthusiasts. So uh, also uh, declares its support and, and commitment in this regard. So uh, that's all. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Przemysław. This is really something special is going on because we're talking about Polish space sector. We're talking about cooperation be be between Polish uh, space companies, between uh, Polish uh, societies and astronomy rovers. Uh, we have uh, a representative of the Polish government in Ireland. Uh, we have some very famous scientists. I think that there's something going very, very important. Come, come, come on. And I would like to invite you as well, our president of uh, the, um, our branch, Warsaw branch, PTMA. And there's also uh, Yola Wichinska. She's a teacher. She's a teacher of the information in IT and physics in physics uh, in the in the school. So we have a very nice accelerator place to to make new uh, ideas how we should how we can promote astronomy and all uh, IS scientists uh, in, uh, in in the schools in the teachers in our societies. Um, so one more time, thank you very much uh, for that, uh, Mr. Krzysztof. 
can you invite, can you talk about yourself? Can you talk about your help, about your support that you give to us, which is very, very important. And that's why we are here. Uh, good evening, everyone. It's nice to see you. Uh, I will tell shortly because I'm here representing two entities. One is Polish Astronomical Society, which is uh, a society of astronomy, among, uh, which is a large society of professional astronomers. And the second society, Poland, uh, is Polish Society of Amateur Astronomers, which is, which is Robert's now. So we are both, these two societies are um, among many, many other uh, astronomy clubs, there are main societies in Poland. Uh, and the Polish Astronomical Society is supporting um, our friendly and other society in some project, including Copernicus 550. And I'm also a coordinator of uh, something called uh, Office of Astronomy Outreach which is among International Astronomical Union, which is global organization of astronomers. And the task of Office for Astronomy Outreach is of course doing astronomy communicating astronomy and astronomy outreach. And do it um, in many countries and to co collect uh, between various societies from various countries. The role of coordinators is for, is for example, uh, if uh, Robert uh, is looking for some other society in Ireland, for example, uh, me as coordinator from Poland can contact coordinator from Ireland and we can help Robert or Robert, Robert can contact coordinator from Ireland directly. Uh, so there is a global list of coordinators. So if your society wants to contact someone in another countries, it might help. But shortly about two other projects. One is called Astro GPS, which is run by the Polish Astronomical Society, and the international version of it is in preparation. And this is intended to be a database of astronomical events. In various places, conferences, workshops, uh, online meetings, uh, and so on. Uh, so we can easily find what is happening. Uh, there are about 10 countries which would like to join us, but uh, no Ireland on the board yet. So if in your country is someone who would like to join, you can contact me uh, and we can discuss it. And the second project is uh, called Astronomical Guide to Poland. Uh, which is in preparation now. It's not available for the public yet. It will be started by the end of the year. And also international version is in preparation. And if you, if you don't have, it, it, what, what is that? It's a tourism um, guide to some places in your country which are related to astronomy space. Is such obvious things like uh, telescopes or observatories, but also many other things like monuments, um, solar clocks, and so on. Uh, in Poland, there is well over 1,000 objects of this kind. Uh, so we are preparing uh, this to be useful for people who are seeking for interesting places to, for tourism. Uh, here is some, are a few samples of uh, how it will be uh, in, in on a website or on mobile app. If you think, if you don't have something like that in your country and you would like to create something like that, we can also contact because by the end of the year we will have international version of this software and it can be also useful for your country. So these are all what my time is out. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much, Krzysztof, for this short uh, invitation and explanation. Who you are and what you're doing. You're doing big things. So I believe so that uh, with uh, the huge support of Krzysztof, we will be able to start to develop our network globally. 
for sure. And this is something really special and beautiful because at the moment we have some signals, we have some touch, we have some connection with the uh, uh, Italian, Spanish, and uh, one more um, from uh, from one country from South America. Uh, information that they would like to cooperate with us. So hopefully very soon we will be able to create another very similar meeting with some other uh, astronomical uh, associations from not only across the uh, across the Europe but across the world. Um, so Chris, uh, thank you very much for your uh, presentation. And uh, uh, Sebastian, uh, can you introduce yourself? Uh, can you show us uh, the beautiful and very interesting um, presentation about sun eclipse? Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to meet you tonight. Uh, I think uh, that the uh, idea of uh, cooperation between our societies uh, Polish amateurs and uh, Irish astronomers, it's a bright idea, why not? Especially uh, during uh, this uh, year, 2023, it's a very special uh, special uh, year in Poland, it's Nikolaus Copernicus year, but it's also international because everybody knows Copernicus and uh, especially astronomers. Uh, okay, uh, I have a s I have a small um, presentation about our society and uh, also a short movie, uh, Eclipses. Um, okay, I share my screen. I can't share um, voice, I mean uh, audio. Let's make a... Let's make a small testing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I start, I start, I, first I start the, the movie and please uh, give me feedback uh, whether you hear uh, the voice. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, fantastic. So let's go back and uh, start with, with the beginning. Okay, uh, Polish Society of, of Amateur Astronomers, this is English version, but in Poland we call our society Polskie Towarzystwo Miłośników Astronomii. Uh, it's a quite old uh, society, it's uh, more than 100 years. And uh, we have 19 branches in different parts of Poland, uh, in the middle and uh, south, southern, uh, southern parts of Poland, but uh, unfortunately you see uh, close to the sea we don't have uh, too many uh, branches, uh, but uh, we have uh, almost 1,000 members, 750 plus, but it's uh, almost 1,000 members, so it's quite a, a huge number of uh, people, uh, astronomy enthusiasts. In our society, we have a different um, thematical special uh, topic sections. For instance, uh, astronautics, uh, historical, um, variable stars, observations, um, meteorites and meteors, and also uh, comet observations section, um, dark sky protection section, sun observation section, etc., etc. And uh, I'm going to show you a short movie about uh, about a very important part of uh, our society. Uh, I mean the magazine. Uh, the magazine. And uh, last year we celebrate 100 years of existence. This is for uh, astronomy popularization and uh, also for professionals. Uh, because uh, our magazine called Urania starts uh, 101 years ago and uh, Urania was uh, connected to the Polish astronomical astronomers, po Polish um, uh, astronomers um, professional um, magazine. We call it Postępy Astronomy and uh, since uh, maybe 10, 10 plus years we work together and this is one title. Okay, so I'm going to show you two minutes uh, presentation about our uh, magazine. Uh, probably it's uh, one of the oldest uh, 
astronomical magazine in the world, especially in Poland. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this is, uh, that's all about uh, our society, uh, but I can uh, tell you much more. And uh, uh, the next, uh, the next uh, thing I'm going to show you is a uh, five minutes uh, short movie. This is about uh, total solar eclipse in Indonesia. Uh, you should know that the Polish Society for Amateur Astronomers uh, organize uh, um, excursions, you know, um, journeys to all, almost all total eclipse uh, paths uh, in different parts of the world. Uh, there are some directions uh, more is it accessible. I mean, uh, in 2017, when it, there was there was a uh, total solar eclipse in uh, America, a great American eclipse. So we had about uh, five plus uh, teams in uh, different parts of uh, United States. Uh, but uh, there are also directions uh, not uh, as easy as the US. Uh, so I'm going to show you uh, such a report, five minutes report from uh, Indonesia. Uh, we were um, on a, you know, on a trip where we just tried to reach a total solar eclipse path using uh, MS Volendam ship. It was uh, in the middle of uh, Makassar Strait between two uh, to um, Indonesian islands and uh, on board uh, we met a special person from Ireland. Uh, probably some of you should know this person. So uh, this is only five minutes movie and uh, during that uh, most of the time we'll take the tot totality. So uh, the totality was recorded with uh, three cameras through a telescope with a wide lens, uh, simple GoPro for uh, horizon, horizon uh, observations, and also with a TV, uh, huge zoom uh, professional camera, and all this makes it. You should know that during, uh, during uh, um, this movie preparation, we take care for the timing. timing. So uh, there are no cuts, so we will see the whole totality. Okay, let's start. Nie, 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 nie,
wobec nie mamy dość dobrą prognozę pogody. Ostatnie dane zaćmienie zobaczyło na Australii w północnym Queensland. Było to piękne, fantastyczne zjawisko. Rozpoczęło się nisko na wschodzie tuż po wschodzie słońca. Faza całkowita prognozy jest najbardziej fascynująca. Niezwykła cienna tarcza w niebie, otoczona piękną, białą, perłową koroną słoneczną z czerwonymi protuperacjami. To było fantastyczne. Motywacją do pokonania tysięcy kilometrów jest widok korony słonecznej protuberancji. Tak, ale nie tylko. Niesamowite jest doświadczenie zaćmienia jako całości. Zaćmienie to nie tylko obserwacja wizualna, ale też odczuwanie różnych wrażeń z nim związanych. Jeżeli zobaczy się jedno zaćmienie całkowite, to ma się ochotę, a wręcz potrzebę, aby zobaczyć kolejne. Doświadczenie takiego zjawiska jest naprawdę transformującym przeżyciem. Jakie masz plany podczas najbliższego zaćmienia? Będziesz tylko patrzył i dyrektował się pięknie i dotknie, czy zamierzasz rejestrować i poparać? Planuję zrobić tylko kilka zdjęć. Nie mam takiego zaawansowanego sprzętu jak wasza ekipa, tylko prosty aparat. Najważniejsze dla mnie jest jednak zobaczenie zaćmienia na własne oczy. Znajdziemy sobie dobre miejsce na pokładzie, zrobimy kilka zdjęć, ale uważam, że najlepsze rejestracje zjawiska zrobią profesjonalne i wyposażone ekipy, taka jak wasza. Thank <laughs> you. 
Stolendam captain did a good, uh, great job because he, he stabilized uh, the ship with a speed of 12 knots. So uh, everything depends on the, the waves and the waves predict and the, the wind uh, predict that uh, 12 knots will stabilize the, you know, the, um, the deck and uh, so the observations was were very stable and we were able to see the corona uh, through the telescopes and uh, at the end uh, i'd like to show you two minutes uh, clip uh, uh, as i mentioned before uh, our uh, association is uh, quite old we have more than 100 years and a uh, few years ago we celebrate 100 years in Krakow, in the, the, this is the south, southern part of Poland. And uh, we have also um, our uh, main base uh, of our society in, in uh, Krakow, so we prepared, um, you know, a um, you know, lot of uh, uh, observations, uh, even uh, theatrical and um, dance uh, um, event and uh, all this happened during our 100 years um, anniversary uh, so two minutes clip about our anniversary and you will see uh, how we work Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Sebastian, for this very interesting uh, presentation. So at the end of our presentation, uh, I would like to show you, I would like to tell you something more about the Copernicus Project 23550, uh, because we would like to remember about the Copernicus achievements to be a... Uh, Globally, human uh, experience and uh, and the knowledge about the universe and our place in the universe. Now we would like to go more. We would like to show our young generations um, that we would like to show our achievements, our achievements as a as a humans as a space industry to inspire them to 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 
We know something more about them. That astronomy is very important, but there's something more. There's astronautics, there's IT, there's space sector. That's why we'd like to share this experience, share this knowledge uh, between our countries, between our societies. So I will show you uh, very quick um, our website. This is a website. Can you see uh, my presentation? Yeah. So now we can see this is a, the website of the Warsaw branch of the PTMA. Uh, what we've done is... Um, a second, this way. Uh, if you go to the uh, Copernicus 2355, go to the uh, English version, we're starting to make this kind of international uh, network communication uh, to start to share our knowledge. To meet, to meet each other, uh, over here in the English version, uh, we wrote in our description what we would like, what our goals are, what we would like to achieve. And this evening meeting is a very simple good, uh, example that we are going, going, going on a good way. Uh, over there you can find some YouTube uh, inspiration, what we've done in the past, for example, uh, this is a part uh, solar eclipse in the previous year. We've done it just before the Copernicus Center. It's very modern, we can say, place when we teach uh, young generation and our societies, uh, Polish uh, societies, about the knowledge, about the astronomy, and not only. What we've done it, just look at that. Um, we saw this very spectacular uh, show, but we met a lot of people over there. And what we've done, we've done the same look like what we've done tonight. Uh, we have, we organized online a meeting with seven, with I think more than 12 places in, in, in Poland and one place in Canaria Islands. So this is the way that we would like to go, that we'd like to share our experience, our passion about the astronomy. So please come to us. Let's make another events in the future. And for the next um, event, we would like to offer you on the 19th of um, June in the Copernicus Center in Warsaw. We would like to, so this is this uh, planetarium when we, when we will organize this meeting. Uh, we would like to make another meeting with you with some other uh, astronomy uh, societies um, from Europe and hopefully in other places in the world. And we would like to talk, for example, about the JUICE uh, satellite um, um, European Space Agency project, because Polish space agency, Polish space um, companies, they make some participation in this project. I believe so that Irish uh, companies and Irish space agency, right? Am I right? Just tell me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've done it as well, some very important parts of it. Let's talk about this. Let's uh, let inspire young generation across the Europe that we can do something like that. We can inspire them to um, to start to to, 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 to to search about their own way, about the future, about the professional way, but as a hobby as well. So I think this is something very important, what we can make together globally for young generation, right? Um, I can talk a lot of more about uh, about the our uh, ideas, what we can do together. But I think at the moment that sh should be enough. Thank you very much for this small and short uh, talk. One more time, I would like to thank you very much and say to everyone parts that we have this kind of meeting today. And what? Hopefully, we will. We will have another meetings during this year and in the next years, because I would like to say that we are organizing this kind of events uh, maybe once, maybe twice a month during the way to next two years. So please be invited to and participate in other events um, and hopefully we can do much more together. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you very much for of course, uh, for, for, for the invitation for the Irish Association. And one more time, thank you very much for 
Polish ambassador, her eminence, and Agnieszka, and Agnieszka, that, that you are with us. It's yes. very, very important. Yeah, um, I don't know. I'm going right to suppose that we could be shared channels of things. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Don't go away for John. <laughs> Sorry, would you? I can see you. Are you okay with your camera? Yeah, I uh, just our uh, camera has kind of froze. I'm not too sure. I can use the alternative camera. Are you uh, flying with us? Not, uh, we're still here. And uh, hopefully, I've got, I hope now we can share our screen. I'm sure we can. I don't know why our camera has. Oh, sorry, wrong one. Um, but Robert, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, yeah, Robert, that was very interesting. Thanks very much to all of your, your fellow astronomers there. And I just noticed that during that, our two societies have an awful lot in common. We both do the magazine, we're both involved with different observatories. We have the same type of outreach program uh, where we do satellite events and everything like this. And unfortunately, we are done with them. We've only got one more meeting now before our season ends. So we'll, we'll finish up in May. And we won't be back then until September. But we will talk about uh, maybe a smaller meeting for that, uh, that June event. But I will talk to you that Thursday. Uh, I'll give you a ring more email. Is that okay? Yes, of course. It will be great. So I'm going to introduce our, our one of the best known um, amateur astronomers in Ireland, and, and I, I can definitely say one of the most liked amateur, amateur astronomers in Ireland, uh, John Flannery. As I was saying before, he is actually the editor of a, a magazine, Arden Magazine, uh, which we do, and we also do another one by John O'Neill, which is our uh, yearly annual uh, magazine as well. John is yeah. interested in everything, uh, everything to do with astronomy, but especially uh, folklore and that uh, different uh, world cultures. He's best known for his binocular observing. Like he's done astronomy for many years now. I would say I won't say how many years, but he never had a telescope. He never owned a telescope until we actually came to COVID there two years ago. And um, he has a passion about auroras. I was trying to get him last night, but he was in the wilds of Kerry uh, searching for auroras. And but apart from that. He has a great interest in astronomical history, which is talking now is about 5,000 years of astronomy in Ireland. So I just said, I hope you all enjoy it. Thanks. Over to John. Thanks. Thank you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our friends in Poland and to our friends in the Canary Islands, I believe. Uh, you mentioned Robert, there's a club in the Canaries. Um, Representatives of the embassy and the ambassador is here earlier. Um, I to do 5,000 years in uh, 20 minutes, uh, I guess, <laughs> and uh, start. But I was very interested in uh, what, what you said, Christoph, about uh, the project you have about the uh, creating a website of all the areas of astronomy interest in Poland. There, there is a website in uh, for Ireland called astronomytrail.ie, but it hasn't been updated in some time. So certainly it would be interesting to talk to you about the project in Poland and try and uh, revive it in Ireland um, because, because of that, that is quite um, something we should do highlight. Um, all that's been done. I won't have to do it all in 5,000 years. Um, basically, like the oldest structure uh, in the world that is aligned for astronomy is New Grange. It's about 50 kilometers northwest of Dublin. It was built uh, 5,000 years ago, and it's where the story of Irish astronomy starts. On the winter solstice every year, the sun shines through a, a slit and it lights up a chamber about 100 meters long on the back of a, a shaft about 100 meters long. The way how they know it's 5,000 years old is when it was built, the sun would shine down at the moment of sunrise. Now it doesn't happen until four and a half minutes after sunrise. 
And, uh, and that's because the Earth um, slightly broadened some of its axis over a period of about 26 and a half thousand years. And if they work backwards, um, it's an effect called precession. And if they work backwards, they can find the, the moment when the sun would have shone in at sunrise. And they're able to date it in that way. There's lots of other um, archaeoastronomy structures around Ireland. Another example here is in Cork, from Stone Circle, also aligned with the winter solstice. I can jump ahead a few thousand years now. <laughs> um, and, uh, I so of course um a lot of like it doesn't mean astronomy wasn't practiced in the age in the usual human time. Uh, in the Middle Ages, monks kept records of the things they saw in the sky. They also copied many of the Greek Arabic astronomy books about astronomy, and the examples have been preserved in Ireland all those. And uh, I guess um, we also find in folklore. Uh, in Celtic folklore, there's some mentions of sky events that are related to certain heroes and heroines in, in Irish mythology. But the story really starts with the building of uh, Johnson Observatory in Dublin in 1785. It, it was part of Trinity College, and it's, it's just on the north west edge of the city. Of course, the city has grown up around it now. It's about eight kilometres from the city centre, or walking distance. You know, it's great, but now you just get the bus. <laughs> but it's where um, the Dublin Institute of Advanced Studies have an active uh, astronomy program there. Uh, you, you mentioned earlier about, uh, Robert mentioned about the Juice Mission. One of the senior professors, Professor Katrina Jackman, is part of a team that has the magnet and magnet amateur experiment on the peace mission. Uh, and so they would be very interested in collaborating with the group in Poland, I, I believe. Um, but it's for, uh, there has been a number of famous figures at Johnson Observatory. The most famous is William Warren Hamilton. He developed a branch of mathematics that's used in modern applications like computer graphics and spacecraft navigation. Um, don't ask me to do the maths though, um, because it's, it's quite, well, it's not completely complex, but it's, it's complex enough. And then our now observatory is a sister observatory of Jansink. It's in Northern Ireland, and it was built just a few years after the Dublin Observatory, and we collaborate a lot together on various projects. Armara also has the biggest planetarium in Ireland um, attached to the observatory. It was, uh, first, the first director was the famous Patrick Moore, the, the great BBC television presenter. And it's also um, both groups of active research programs in solar physics, uh, asteroids, uh, massive stars, star evolution, and lo lots of other areas of astronomy. Um, I just jump on to the next slide, there, don't think so. But of course, uh, the jewel in the crown, I guess, for astronomy historians is Barry Castle. It was there, the biggest telescope in the world that existed for 70 years until Mount Wilson Observatory was built in 1917 in, uh, in California, near Los Angeles. But the, the telescope, when it was built in 1845, it allowed astronomers for the first time to see structure in galaxies. Up to then, they were, they were just fuzzy objects, but 
this drawing from the Terrigal uh, is of the famous Grogu galaxy, and it's very like modern photographs. It shows, beautifully shows the spiral arms and also the satellite companion galaxy to the bigger galaxy itself. Um, it, it, the mirror in the telescope weighed three and a half tons. Uh, so they built a little railway system to move the mirror between the castle workshop and the telescope itself. They had two mirrors and they would swap them in and out. Um, the, the, ground, the castle also has a, a fantastic museum if you ever visit because the family, the, the Ross family who have lived in the castle for 400 years, um, they were involved in many other areas of science. The world's first suspension bridge is on the grounds of the castle. Uh, one of the Cardinal uh, sons, Lawrence Parsons, developed the steam turbine. And it was used in power stations and steam ships uh, after it was developed. The boat castle is also where there's now uh, a moment of the Lothar Cardinal frequency array telescope. Yeah, the, the radio telescope is part of the network across Europe. And the I found the furthest site is actually southern Poland. So, there is a connection there between uh, Poland and, uh, and Poland in that they are the most distant uh, radio telescopes. The telescopes can be connected to work together as if they were a single telescope over 2,000 kilometers in diameter. And that allows them to see very fine detail in uh, objects in the universe. For radio astronomers to study, the, like the island gets about two percent of the time on the low fire network. So that means that for two percent of uh, the time the telescope is operating, they can use the entire network. And uh, but normally uh, the telescope would work independent of the main network. And they do a lot of solar studies because when it's just working as a single telescope, the resolution is not as good. It's only equivalent to the diameter of the full moon or the sun. So they are the only objects you can do, or the sun is the only object you can really study in radio in, de in detail when it's operating independently. But the, uh, it's, it's in the middle of Ireland, so if you're visiting, it's uh, easy to get to from anywhere really. It's, it's only about maybe 25 kilometers from my home town, so I think it's, it's nearby. It's not a cup of tea, but it's good. So if you're, if you're nearby, you can, as Mick said, call in and stay. <laughs> but certainly, uh, if, if you don't mind going on to the next one, what was that? There's a number of other well known famous observatories, or historic observatories around Ireland. The uh, Markley Castle in Sligo, it's, it's, it's in ruins now, but it was where there was once the largest refractor in the world. Our Ireland at one point had the three biggest telescopes in the world. Uh, but now we don't. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, I, when, when um, you, you were showing the, the video clip, uh, Sebastian, uh, uh, of the, the kind of celebrations of the anniversary of the Astronomical Society in Poland, I noticed uh, a Globe Dublin telescope in one of the clips in the video. Oh. And of course, the Globe Telescope firm uh, was established in Dublin in the 19th century. In fact, it's only about maybe three and a half, four kilometers from where we are at the moment. That was where the workshop was. There was 400 people working there in rock mines, and they were telescopes for Observatories in Ireland and abroad. 
And this is Michael kindly brought in a copy of this for me. This, this book of Ingenious Ireland is, if you find a copy of it, it's, it's a fantastic read about all the historic observatories, but also the great scientists and inventors uh, that, that were in Ireland. Of course, uh, after 1916, the group free moved to England. It, it was the cause of World War I. They were making uh, optical instruments for warfare, so they uh, moved to England. But also, uh, it was somewhat upheaval, like Johnson Observatory closed around not long after that as well, but it reopened again in 1940 and is now a working observatory again. But certainly, um, like Ireland is a young nation, I guess, so there, there was a, a period of time where there was no scientific activity during the 20th century, but, but nowadays, uh, uh, oh, I, I just want to next slide. Nowadays, of course, there, there's a lot happening in the country. Um, we, we, we only have two very small planetariums, uh, and they're about as far away from Dublin as you can get. Like, it involved a very long journey to, to get to them, uh, where those little red stars are, are the positions of them. Uh, there is a couple of uh, dark sky arcs and uh, university observatories, but the researchers are in Dublin were involved with the software for the Murray uh, instrument on the James Webb Space Telescope. I mentioned uh, James, Professor Katrina Jackman there. They also, we've been a member of the European Southern Observatory for the last five years. And the Irish government is currently considering application to the sun. Um, you, you, you mentioned, uh, Robert, you mentioned uh, space, uh, space opportunities. There, there is quite a few industries in Ireland involved with the space industry. One example is Embaro, which uh, made the material covering the heat shield of the, the solar orbiter spacecraft. So they have contributed, they also made the cameras that were on the James Webb Space Telescope to monitor that it successfully opened the sun shield and captured the images of it uh, being released by the rocket. And Ireland's first satellite, AirSat-1, is being built right here on, in this uh, university that we're standing in tonight. So it should have been launched last December, but the European rocket blew up that was supposed to launch it, so they have to, have to reschedule it, but hopefully it should fly soon. Um, let's just jump on to the next one. So. And of course, in terms of the astronomy, amateur astronomy scene, there's, there's quite a few clubs in Ireland, uh, three national clubs and many uh, local clubs around the country. And then, like everywhere, there's people that are not members of any club, but are parts of informal groups like Astrophotography Club Ireland that take world-class images from dark sky areas. Um, there's a group um, called uh, Aurora and NLC uh, Chasers, which I was monitoring last night, which meant I was driving all over Ireland to the Northern Lights. But um, yeah, so there, there is quite a lot happening here. Nick mentioned Irish Astronomy Week, which happened for the first time this year and there was many activities. Amazingly we had an aurora and to see a northern lights on the night we set up a public outreach event and there's three major star parties around the country and lots of informal activities going on. Yeah. And then our own society is um, like uh, Nick mentioned a bit about our 
Korean society earlier. It was set up in 1937. Uh, one of our publications is uh, Orbit, which uh, comes out every three months and just has stuff with by members and lots of uh, interesting articles. Nick writes the Sky Notes. Uh, Aubrey, who is here tonight, who writes the, or collects the observations from members. And, uh, yeah, and, and, and we, we meet once a month, we do the talks online as well. Um, and I, I just go, just to finish up, an interesting thing I discovered is that Compounded Business birthplace is the exact same latitude as Dublin. So we're also uh, 53 degrees north, so for our Polish friends, we, we are connected not only on the internet tonight, but we are connected by latitude on earth. Oh, is that a handsome So so, thank you everyone for listening, and uh, hopefully we will have lots more to cooperation going forward. Um, and, and thanks to the for the I'll make this one more slide. Oh, yes. <laughs> thank you very much. This is a very stable collection. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, John. And if anybody wants to know what I'm pointing at there, I'm actually pointing at the oh, Venus. Yeah, Venus. Venus. Yeah. 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 So there was one I jumped on, because everybody could see it, kind of things go at one time. <laughs> and uh, I'm still looking for the egg. Uh, I, mean, I forgot to say about the link at the bottom, because uh, the, the, the presentation, uh, not tonight's presentation, it has a longer presentation um, the yeah. history of our issues. Story. What we'll also do is we'll make the entire feature tonight available on YouTube and put links to to download the actual presentations. So oh, okay. Yeah. Well, so I think we we'll, we we'll finish up there and I'm, I'm, we just have a talk among ourselves. We'll let you go off. I know it's much later in Poland. Uh, so it must be right past your bedtime. So we we'll let you see that and we will be in touch again. Thank okay. you, Thanks. 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 Thank you very much. I think uh, this was a very nice uh, evening uh, meeting, and I hope we will arrange something uh, um, next next week, next month. You know, the Copernicus year is still on until December, and uh, after the Copernicus year. Another will come. <laughs> and I, I should to, I, I should to say that uh, a few years ago I cooperated with John Murphy from Cork and I visited um, the Castle Rock Observatory and I, I don't know whether maybe you, you know John Murphy, he's a teacher in uh, his uh, Hilarage he Astronomy Club and uh, also uh, in Cork uh, there is a um, university college and uh, I, I visited, uh, and uh, I uh, just enter the building, and I realized that I'm on the moon surface because uh, in the University College Cork you have uh, a special kind of uh, laboratory with microscopes and with a set of uh, rocks from the sun. Uh, so, uh, sorry, to the far, to the far. Uh, rocks from the moon. Uh, this, uh, this was uh, prepared by NASA, and uh, they prepared uh, maybe 10, 20 sets uh, of the piece of the uh, moon rock and just gave to the universities. And you have such a uh, rock treasure in the University College, uh, Cork, and this is fantastic. It's, uh, you know, it looks fantastic through the microscope in the polariza polar polarization uh, um, the filters with the light, special kind of light, and I uh, felt like I, you know, I, I was on the moon surface. So it was a fantastic visit because I met uh, John Murphy, uh, his astronomy club uh, students, and of course, uh, Piece of the moon. Okay, thank you very much for this uh, meeting. Thank you, so thank, you so thank you very much. Thank you.
All the best things in Ireland are in Park, Sebastian. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. So, see you later.